Uh, yes, uh, make sure you pack enough clothes. I packed a little bit more than enough. I still have a couple shirts that I haven't worn yet. I couldn't be like Chris. Chris uh, only packed two or three uh, items to wear and he's a, he's a super soldier. I'll probably be on his level next year. I would at least bring maybe like two dresses or maybe a skirt so that way when you know you go on Sunday or you do something a little more formal, definitely bring a dress for that. And then the rest of the days, um, jeans or a longer, you know, and a t-shirt are pretty much fine. Uh, I wear tennis shoes and then some kind of sandals usually like with the closed toe and I think that really helps. And I just packed really light and I just wore each thing twice. And you can, I just brought little tie things and I did laundry in the sink. And I just brought a travel backpack, so it was easy for me to carry. If you can fit everything in a carry-on, it is so much easier and it makes just life much, much easier. Okay, so for pants, you don't really have to dress that fancy. Just make sure you don't have shorts or leggings. So sweatpants are good, jeans are good, just nothing tight. All right, for next year, the things that I would change is I would bring more soft tissue, toilet paper. Um, a lot of the uh, Ethiopians also thought it was really cool to have like a Charmin type brand, so I would bring that also to share. I would dress more in layers. I brought more long sleeves than I did short sleeves, and I found myself more hot than I was cold. Um, I would also bring more snacks. I thought I brought enough, but it would be nice to have more. Um, and it's not because I didn't like the food, just in between when you feel like you're hungry, then, then you have food available because there's not fast food here and everything really has to be prepared or you go to a restaurant. Pack more than two outfits. Um, I would pack at least one or two dresses and then I would pack five outfits or maybe six. If you have room, pack as much as you can clothes wise because they get dirty and it's not fun to wash them here. And I would stick with a couple pants, definitely no shorts. Shoulders aren't a big deal. You can wear jeans, just don't like, I wouldn't wear like jeggings or leggings, but don't listen to Chris for his wearing advice. <laughs> Uh, my favorite memory has definitely just been all of my experiences with the school. Seeing those little babies run up to you and just want to hug you and get to know you is a really great feeling and knowing that you can give back to them as well is just really fulfilling and I hope that you will experience that too if you decide to come. My favorite memory was getting out of the van and going to a supermarket and buying hubbub, which is watermelon. My favorite memory was going to the school and seeing all those smiley faces and shaking their hands and building relationships. Uh, probably riding a camel. <laughs> okay, I actually have so many favorite memories. It was really fun to work at the school. The kids are very loving. I really liked riding the camel, although that may not happen for you in future trips, um, but it was really cool. Also, most showers are not warm. Uh, they're cold and sometimes they don't come out of the faucet. They come out of a bucket. So it was really exciting when I got a hot shower that came from uh, like a faucet from the ceiling. There are a few naked people walking around, um, also bathing in the river. I found it to, I was surprised there was so much trash like everywhere. And the rivers, all on the road, everywhere was trash. And that they just throw their trash on the ground when they're done with it. That's culture shock. Um, for me, there wasn't really a culture shock. There was a place to pee and there was a place to sleep, so I was fine. And the people were very nice, so I guess that was a shock, because in America they're not. So, go is. So there is a bit of a culture shock for me anyways, and that was the food. It's very different. Um, even the foods that they try to make American don't taste American. Um, it was a big thing that I had to get over but once you do it's good and you can enjoy and not offend anyone <laughs> and so just be open to the new uh, foods because they are different. So this is my first time out of the country I didn't really know what to expect but I was actually shocked at uh, the people in the outskirts of the city you had the farmers and everybody has cows and donkeys and sheep and they're just walking around with them in the city some people are walking around with a load of sheep 
So that was a culture shock. But the people were just extremely uh, friendly and kind. Uh, and I was just in shock and awe of how they treated us. Um, I've never been treated so kind in my life. I would just go in very open-minded, know that it is nothing compared to America, and so you have to be open to the different uh, bathrooms you're going to be using and the different um, level of bugs that will be in your room and just be open to that and become friends with it and become a woman or man of the wild. Uh, the climate is a little bit different. Chris prepared me for that. He also prepared us for uh, what we were going to experience with the squatty potties. Uh, walking into the restrooms is very different and there's just a hole in the ground and you have to use it. But I wasn't scared or afraid because I was already prepared for that. Um, so they have a lot of power outages here uh, that we were prepared for, a lot of water shutdowns that we were prepared for. We didn't have water for a couple of days, but we had buckets. We managed, you know, God made a way, and that was the most important thing. My advice for next year is to go in with no plans. Just be willing to go with the flow. It's The plans are, best laid plans never always work. So just be really flexible where you're going, and just be really respectful. And, you know, if they put something in front of you, at least try it, you know, even if you don't like it. You know, it's, it's very hospitable to do that, and it really warms the heart. So I would say just... Be flexible if things don't work out, just shake, you know, shake it off and keep going. So there were a couple couple times that he became very evident to me. The first would be about four days into the trip when we had just made it to Desi and I was very sick and over the whole thing before it even started. And I had just prayed so hard that night to have like a change of heart and become um, selfless and like to really do the things that I wanted to accomplish over here. And I literally woke up the next morning with a whole attitude change, was completely healthy, and the rest of the trip was great. So that was the first time. And then the second time um, was at the house church on the Sunday that we were in Desi. And I did not understand one thing that was being said, um, but I just felt it so evidently. Tears just started coming out of my eyeballs, and it was pretty cool. So, yeah. God was evident over the entire trip. Uh, the planning, the execution, everything was completely out of my control. So the, the leadership position was that of a servant leader. And, and I just yielded to God's will. I yielded to Africa time. I yielded to changes in schedule. And, and the Lord provided every step of the way perfectly, just the way it was supposed to be. When I went to church service on the second Sunday, uh, just I could feel the spirit all around and uh, just started praying and I started crying uh, but it was happy tears and it just was so moving to see God work through all different people all over the world know it's the same God in Ethiopia that it is in America. I saw God show up on this trip when I got really really sick and I had all the Ethiopians surrounding me and encouraging me and taking care of me and I felt the Lord's love through his Ethiopian people and that is something I will take with me the rest of my life, how God uses people to show his love towards us. I actually saw God show up multiple times. Um, the first time was in the classroom uh, with the kids. I was just doing my thing and teaching and um, just spreading love to them. And after a class, a couple of the kids came up and they all asked me, uh, they're like, what religion are you? What religion are you? And I, I believe that they could just feel my energy. They could see um, God uh, working through me and how much I really wanted to be there with them.